streets to the metal hand of God. Metal, metal, metal hand of God. Thank you, welcome all you streets to the metal hand of God. This is nerds with your earth to purge on some lot. And welcome back to the Metal Hand of God podcast. I am your host, Wayne, and I am good at the thing, according to my co host, which is that guy over there. <laughs> <laughs> the rum guy. How's everybody tonight? Uh, they're not going to answer you, asshole. Um, anyway, yeah, um, they're, they're talking to their car radio right now. <laughs> they're like, "We're so good. We're so good. Yay!" I'm Bluetooth, and everybody can hear them. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fancy. Um, and today we have a returning guest, the uh, amazing act, Dance Loud. What's up, guys? What's going on? Hey, hey. What's going on? I'm Kristen. Right. I'm Desiree. I'm so glad to be back talking to y'all. We had so much fun last time. Hell yeah, yes, we did. Up, yeah. That's what see. That's what we like to hear. Um, one thing we didn't ask. Yes, there was one thing we didn't ask, and Rum wants to know. I'd, I'd like to know is, and if we did, I really I listened to the show. I don't remember asking it. I don't either. Did we talk about how you came into your name for your group? Um, I don't. I don't think. I'm not sure. Well, we could do a short synopsis just in case a listener didn't catch it. If we did or didn't, I yeah, don't know. I, just, just, just sum it up. Just something real, you know. Because I don't remember. I think we did talk about it, but it wasn't recorded on our uh-huh. end. It's got yeah. a few, few things. So Kristen used to work at a children's fitness center, and she had a Brazilian boss that had just a really thick Portuguese accent. Oh. And there was a coworker that wasn't wearing deodorant and so they had to like go into this meeting and you know talk about you know how are we going to tell her clientele yeah that you know uh, so with, it's, it's with children and it's a fitness center so mothers are you know and fathers can always be sensitive to hygiene so it, it had to be a discussion so our Portuguese accent or the way Portuguese is, because I don't know how it is. Somebody's got to tell me how it is. But the way she worded it in the nicest way was, listen, you smell loud. (laughs) (laughs) Kristen tells me the story and I'm just like dying because I know her boss, you know, and and she's a really nice lady, and it was just the nicest she way. She started it with, sometimes I go to the bathroom in between classes. I have to p- practice my Portuguese accent. And I take a little water, wet my frizz, and I, you know, maybe pat my pits or whatever she said. I don't even know. <laughs> but, honey, you smell loud. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that we were just, it was an inside joke. You know how, like, Beavis and Butthead hang out, and they have a million inside jokes that only they understand? That became one of the many inside jokes. Because and now, we are the real-life version of Beavis and Butthead. Right, so a lot of people can't even understand <laughs> what we're talking about. We're just talking to ourselves and weird, you know, things. And that it not only that, Desiree does graphic design. She, it visually works together, you know? if you, It's like dance and loud. It's It's got, um like, if it's... It's almost the same size, but then loud is looks bigger, but really it's smaller. So it kind of went with the theme of the duality theme that we always go with, like dance loud. It's it's two words, and and you know if you if you it just looks cool in graphic design visualness. <laughs> it really what really happened was we just started calling everything loud. Cause, you know, cause we, we did draw it. You drew it on the chalkboard. But I, it was after we said it. We were out to dinner, and I had said so we'd said something, and we we're like, you know. If, if people people just dance loud and we're like, Ooh, dance loud. I kind of like that. And then we went out with some friends afterwards and there happened to be a chalkboard standing where we're all hanging out. And I like, I wrote it out um, and kind of a graffiti font. And I was like, Hey, actually like, I like the look of this and cool. yeah. And then it just stuck. Yeah. Well, that's dance a cool like story. That. It's, it's way better than the story that we have about our name. So that, that's, that's good. Yeah. Like, a bit too, because a lot of times, you know, when we are younger times of performing when it was if it's in a house party or an apartment we have to do this whole convincing speech to the the client like hey you know your cops are probably going to be called at mm, six (laughs) o'clock any point in time during our set anytime please do not book us it takes us an hour to load hour to set up all this jazz just to play a 45 minute set or more hopefully and then the cops come (laughs) well the last last time we talked to you it was the weather was miserable there and it was snowy and icky and and it was, it was horrible uh, i'm s- assuming it has gotten better and the world has changed again looks like there's going to be venues opening up so what's the schedule look for you this year 
I mean, we have a bunch of pending dates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just created a live set just the other day. Um, and I'm actually uploading it to YouTube right now as we speak. We didn't really know what to do about all of that. And we instead just performed in one state during the towards the end of the pandemic when vaccines already came out and yada yada but um you know state that's got plenty of room to perform we got our outside. bus back yeah so, so the bus nice. that the whole tour so thing. so yeah when we talked to you guys y'all it was it was super cold here yeah. and you know we just you know and it was like oh my gosh i'm just dying to get out i'm dying to perform i'm right. not really digging these virtual things and so I started to see friends on social media and they were only performing in two states and those states were Arizona and Florida. And so I talked to a couple of friends that do booking and, and I'm like, you know, they kind of pointed out, you know, Hey, there's Florida has a lot of wineries and breweries. And, and I did a pandemic style or pandemic friendly style of booking. And this is really good for music business, but he was able to do sold out shows. Now, mind you, it's not packed because it still has to fit the the, the you know guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I it was he used Eventbrite, and Eventbrite is really big post pandemic. Yeah, yeah we use right. that for uh, the magic shows and stuff that uh, I do with uh, my boss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah, he put a Facebook ad out, put money on the ad to you know sponsor the Eventbrite. And of course, with it tagged the right way, um, we ended up not really having to do much for booking. This guy already figured out a way to get things booked easily, sold out everything. And I, he paid us really well just to be an opener for um, uh, Dixon's Violin. And he was doing nice. a whole tour. And it was a, it was a post-pandemic style of booking I've never seen. I mean, Yeah, no one, like we played in a parking lot. Yeah, Ventbrite <laughs> was really low on, you know, on um, use pre-pandemic. Yeah, it's pretty cool, though. It's a really good... Uh... A little, I guess you can call it app or whatever you want to call it. Little, yeah, that's where all the virtual thing. events are. You're gonna yes. find anything, it's very you cool. know, virtual or real events or you know, it, real is person. It good is, it, is it feeling good to get back and, and kind of the swing of things? Or? Oh, yeah, you know, here we go. <clears throat> Law of ma manifestation, I swear. It was, you know, we it was it was like January, you know, we're approaching February, and you just there's nothing to do in the city at all. You know, it was like we would go to movie theaters, a gaming lounge and the gym, you know, during like winter time and everything was shut down and they're literally, we're just like stuck in our homes. And, and I was like, I can't take it. Like I want to go some, I want to go to a warm state, you know, I just, you know, want to perform anything. And so I started looking into it and seeing friends that were performing and my parents just moved out to Arizona. I was like, well, we could go out there, but you know, moving all of our equipment out there, we don't have our bus yet. Well, like I was talking to a friend and I thought, you know, and our plan was that we were going to rent a van and we were just going to go down and we were going to kind of live in this rented van and make sure to send it back all stinky. And three days prior, you know, we'd been looking for a couple of years um, for a new bus, a bus that had a, a shuttle bus that had a passenger a seat. Ford, because that's what, where it's hard, finding a Ford with a passenger seat. And this time we wanted gas and not diesel. And mm -hmm. literally the clouds opened up and we got a bus three days prior to Very us leaving cool. and an already booked tour <laughs> and all yeah <laughs> we're like yeah we don't have a car or vehicle but we have four shows booked hmm <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was just like waiting the last minute to do you know i was checking like rent a car you know everything in that nature and be like a thousand dollars for dodge caravan i didn't even realize that I don't think a Dodge Caravan would have fit all our equipment, even though we we lessened our equipment to more digital. But I don't know. I don't understand why we have so much stuff. We do, yeah. So so three days prior to you know we we get the bus and we gut out the seats and we build a bed in the back and you know we had a lot of stuff from our old bus like a refrigerator and and mind you this is post pandemic so like San Francisco uh, performances were in parking lots so that was the, the new way to do it. So we have to bring your speakers for par parking lot performances. Oh, That's another God. thing that takes up a lot of mm -hmm. space or some big speakers. Yeah, I'm ready to get those thin Bose ones, but now there's EV and QSC and ABCDEFG. Yeah, all kind of fancy things out there. Oh, plenty of letters to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we did it. It was awesome. We had amazing oysters, met the nicest people. You know, it was, I'd never, we'd only played one show in the past in Florida. I'd, I'd work for oysters. 
Yeah. I never really <laughs> checked out Florida. And so we rode the entire coast, went down to Key West and got the full experience. And it, it was just amazing. And there was a point we were down there for about three weeks. And there was a point where we had an open weekend. And, and I was like, well, we could book this weekend. And or we could take our dog and it'd be kind of a half vacation and us have a full week off on tour. That's never happened before. And this is the first time it was just us two on a tour. And it was super laid back and it was just like really recharged our batteries. And, you know, it was it was just it felt so good. And, and, and we did a better job act physically recharging our batteries. Like she doesn't mean that she means it both ways. <laughs> 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 the more experience you get, the better you maintain those batteries. That's right. Well, did it is you got the bus, so it's it's the van, and and it is it is looking sweet. You got what what do you got the the name on the side of it yet? You got what do you got flames um, on it? So we were thinking flames of it. it went from some sort of precious moments dog daycare kind of uh, yeah, uh, it's like because you don't want people knowing what's inside of it. So we were even oh. driving through Napier, Naples and this, you know, we we're at a stoplight and there was a lot of like Digest in there. Uh, people sitting outside and, and this like older dude goes, that's an RV. And it was like, oh, van life really killed it for us because when we first started hitting the road in 2012, van life hadn't hit yet. So we were able to sleep on the side of the road in Brooklyn and, Without you know, by Central Park and it was no issue. Calling. What's that strange <laughs> van? So it's different now and people know what they're looking at, you know, and we got a kind of turtle top shuttle bus that you would, you know, find at smaller, but it's only only by a hair. Yeah. You know, you'd see it like a hospital or, you know, airport and, and it's amazing. um... So we were thinking about maybe like making a decal that like maybe, you know, if we pull over on some random city and there's, you know, the nearest RV parks like an hour away to like put a magnet on the inside and then, uh, you know, a magnetic thing that says like precious moments, like animal transport or something <laughs> or uh, to kind of try to create it more stealthy again. Cause it used to be stealth. passenger <laughs> shuttle bus. How about just fresh human organs? Yeah. There yes. you go. There no one would go by that. Broke into. Never. Yeah. You know, we did meet someone on the road that told us that these shuttle buses are commonly known by police for for uh, weird things like that and trafficking. So oh, weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she, I think she came into the bus kind of to check to see if I was doing any of that sort of thing because we kind of look funny, like two women in a bus with the, the poodle and... Well, you traffic in fun. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, we're trafficking right. precious, we're, precious we're, moments. We give away fun, precious moments uh, through beats. But our old bus had a Precious Moments child care decal on it that was super creepy. And then one day somebody was telling us about, there's this really creepy bus on Fullerton and Western, and it's got these, like, balloons. And when they said balloons, and I was like, wait, what? And it's like, yeah, it says something like child care. And it's like, does it say Precious Moments? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that bus is so creepy. It's like, that is our bus. <laughs> I mean, it's already been, yeah. It's the one that's been violated, though. It's already been like we don't we have to fix the lock someone got in and took nothing but just hung out in it probably <laughs> yeah that's why we got to try you know it's best to be discreet we're even kind of skeptical about putting a mini split air conditioner i'd rather do double the lots and do a portable ac mm. yeah we found a little like ta- i think it was just a tagger there was like a one of those specific um what it wax kind of markers that were left behind in the bus oh yeah uh, somebody was probably looking to write in there that's weird. Do some, people do some, some weird. People do yeah. weird. People do weird shit, man. I mean, they really do. Like they'll they'll break into something just to like I don't know. I get violent See, with people with just to get in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got nice about it. I got. I'd get violent. You just want to know what's inside that bus. I mean, I. I... But it's nice. It's like yeah, get it out of your system. Yeah. Well, that's, there you go. That's one way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah. Just get Take it out of your nap. system. It's, it's a nice. Relax. Have yourself. Something from our fridge. Oh, just don't so, take our musical equipment. Just leave everything else in there. <laughs> We're musicians. We have nothing. That's how it works. So I don't have a Coke. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, totally. But okay. where did your name come from? You said you had a funny story. Oh, ours. it's not really a funny story. It's just kind of strange. Like, um... We were a a bunch of guys that just met on on basically on Xbox. And... uh 
we were uh, trying to figure out a name for our little clan, our little group on yeah, online. And when Halo first came out, everybody had to have a clan name. Yeah. So you could okay. you know, different clans battle back and forth, and you could do like little, uh, you know, gaming tournaments and things right. like that. Fun. So we had a, our symbol was a basically like uh, it was the metal hands, you know, the hand sticking up like that, but it was on fire, you know, and um, we had picked the color gray. So one of our friends says, well, it looks like a metal hand. And the other guy goes, yeah, well, let's do He says of God like that. And I was like, hey, that's a good name, man. We should use that. And we started using that as our clan name. And uh, I love it. and it just carried over and we just started oh. using it. Forever. Oh, that's amazing. You guys had a precious moment together, and so forever it has a significance. <laughs> it does. It. It's crazy. And it's like it, the, the funny thing about it is we're still friends with almost all those people that were in our, our gamer clan, and like they're all over the country, you know, California, here, um, Australia. Yeah. How many people can you have on? Oh. On on what? On the gaming thing? On oh. your crew. Oh, as many as you oh. want. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. that's awesome. How oh, much? yeah. As many as you want. Oh. There's no Fine. limit. I mean, there there are some people out there that have like massive teams, yeah, like, you know. Yeah, big teams. Yeah, but we, I mean, we have now um, factions. We've got the MHOG UK faction. We've yep. got the. We don't we don't so much game that way anymore. We just have the name, but it's uh, the uh, you know different aspects of the podcast in different locations now. all so over. We, we can talk to people in the U.S. a lot, you know, and 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 uh, of course other places as well. But you know, if you've got a uh, you know, a group in uh, London, it'd be easier for the guys from, you know, the from, UK to handle that right. interview. You know, go to a show, check them out, that sort of thing. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. It's, oh. We've, I mean, you know, we've we've done a lot of real weird branching out and, uh, you know, connecting with other people. And, I mean, and it's really cool because, like, you know, I, I, was, I was having this conversation not that long ago. If it wasn't for the Internet, we couldn't do things like that. But yeah. if it wasn't for the Internet, we wouldn't have – a bunch of bullshit too but you know that's that's a whole nother oh, yeah. story <laughs> balance of life yeah you know but yeah. i mean oh, you are you're going to be your the some of the places you've got booked are there are a lot going on in some breweries you were saying maybe possibly huh? oh uh, oh coming was, up that was the previous uh, oh, uh, was the previous. uh right now Sh chicago has a really good festival season so we have oh, like nice. a july 15 16 weekend and then a september something something weekend i have no idea what the names of the, the festivals are it's through the one of the record stores and well, cool. i don't even know through him or, i don't even know but it's um with the city i think um cool. and um it's yeah we played some virtual shows with the record store then they were recommending us and uh they house our record and Awesome. You know, it's it's a great record store rattleback. If it, anyone is in Andersonville, Chicago, it's something to support. Really I'll, nice. I'll have, uh, to, group I'll of people have to send there. our friends from the uh, the the Mighty Con convention. Yeah. Those guys over they there. They do it curator style, so like how a record store should be. So it's not like a standard franchisee thing where oh this is sells okay stock it up oh does this you know it's like straight up curator based that's, that's cool. So cool that's really cool I mean, like, I'm, I'm assuming but just from the look of feelings when i go in there but i think that's how they're running the show are your buddies doing mighty con this year yes they actually just started uh up they hit me up um about two weeks ago and they're like they sent me a flyer saying that they're coming to new orleans and they're like you ready i was like yeah i'm ready dude let's do this so we're we're gonna start booking up the uh, convention circuit uh, starting this month. Uh, so and they're that, you guys need to go. You need to go down to New Orleans. And, and yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oz was like, we got this guy got us two pairs of hundred foot cords or something for our show <laughs> over there in Oz. Like they, the South really, really takes care of musicians. Yeah. I'm like, you know, compare. I mean, I've heard Europe. Was that you guys have told us that? No, 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 no. Okay. Um, Europe is um similar to United States Southern hospitality, in the way they do their standards when it comes to musician bookings. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, we had a really good time in New Orleans. We're going. Let's go tomorrow. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Next week. <laughs> now that we have precious, we can There's go anywhere. There's gotta be some day where I'm like gonna book a flight and say tomorrow and you know i've never done a last minute booking before well i can tell you guys one thing me and me and justin were talking about this uh, a while back and uh we're still we're still battling what we're going to do with it but we've been talking about doing a festival 
us you know like the metal hand of god presents whatever festival and we're gonna put oh, together yeah. yeah we're gonna get we're, festivals we're gonna I get think- yeah. we're gonna get some of our uh favorite guests and whatnot to do the show and if you guys are interested we'd love to have y'all it'd be, a, it'd be oh we be totally cool. are that would be so fun so just yeah. like a hotel down there in new orleans and... oh we'd have precious we don't oh, even we even put that we'll just just it. You, you yeah the, the... The ace would up. You get the amps to plug into, and I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be great. I, I'm just so excited that uh, you know there, there's concerts coming back and yeah. people are doing stuff. And I've yeah. missed concerts. I've missed going out to see things. And yeah, you know, oh. the entertainment has been such a crap. I did. I was. I was hoping though for like one of those concerts in a bubble, and you go in the bubble or a hamster ball, <laughs> and then you think, and then you mosh and slam against each yes, other. Don't you think that's perfectly safe? I think it's great. You know, you just the oxygen isn't that kind of like that, that silent thing that was going on where you go into a nightclub but you had to wear headphones? Yeah, and you just dance, but no one could the hear the silent music. disco. Yeah, because yeah. you, you could li- you could listen to whatever dance. you wanted to. Yeah, even more aggressively because it's kind of you know. Like like compensating it, yeah it's compensating for the weirdness yeah. <laughs> it's a good time <laughs> yeah, it does so you can really see people dance like how they've never danced before like as though no one's watching but everyone's watching <laughs> you know yeah. I, you, I can't remember the name of this freaking band but they play down here at a um at a big uh festival we have out here called voodoo fest it's huge mm-hmm. um and um god i can't remember it was the flaming lips that's what it was Okay. And you brought up the hamster ball thing, and you know the singer came out in one of those giant hamster balls, and he like rolled across the entire audience. Like he went, nice. he was singing in this giant ball as he was going across the entire audience, and it was insane because there was like, you know, sixty thousand plus people there. So it was really amazing to watch this guy just bounce around in a fucking hamster ball while he's singing his music. You know, that's pretty impressive to have that kind of reach with the wireless mic, right? Yeah. yeah, I was thinking the same yeah. thing. I was like, "Man, he's got a lot. They must put a lot of money into that." Like, how would you do that? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. You would have to like pair up all the receivers in a three hundred and sixty circle or yes. something. I don't know something. It wow, was, it was impressive. Just, the, the, the backtrack was just he was lip syncing. Probably right? most likely <laughs> flaming lip syncing. <laughs> oh God, I didn't think about that one. Yeah, joke. That was great. Oh, that was great. oh goodness, that was a good that's why he's really good at those. You know, I've been practicing my dad jokes. And I think it's because you're a drummer. You're always the one that goes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's we so true. Friends of ours in a band called Pete out here. Uh, they do the dad joke thing the whole time they play, and it's so fucking good. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so good. Like I the, would love that. Stream. Yeah, like the like the drummer just. Like after every every song, goes, hey guys, <laughs> it just starts. It's like and it's like deadpan too. It's not even like you know, yeah, you know, um, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer was an average golfer, you know, because they found a bag of balls next to his bed, you know. But don't, don't you know, shit like that. And it's it was imp- it's just so good. It's so funny. That was a horrible joke. I, I know, but I was just I just <laughs> hey look, I never said they were good. I just said they were funny. <laughs> I love dad jokes. They're the best. Yes. Mm-hmm. She's a I pro. I, I, I have a really good dad joke. I'm trying to remember. This should be a oh, sport. It's a good dad joke, though. It's what do you call a what do you call a uh, a uh, midget uh, psychic that escapes from prison? Uh, uh, what? Or... Small, medium, at large. Oh, yeah. A oh, small, I, I medium. Okay, nice. A small, <laughs> medium at large. You're so fucking stupid. Oh, my God. Okay, okay. I got a dad joke. Um, what size bra did Ariel wear from The Little Mermaid? Ooh. Uh, um, seashells. Seashells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, these innocent, you know, partially innocent jokes. That's what they are. That's, dad, so that's good. what dad jokes are. They're partially innocent. Uh, I love it. So funny. If, if dad actually form. said that joke, though, would would that be creepy? It would be. What was that? If a dad really said that joke yes. out loud, though, would it would it be creepy? Yeah, actually, yeah, I think it would be. It'd, it'd be, be it'd be it'd be borderline like you're gonna go to jail, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You can't say that to your 14 year old daughter's friends. No, 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 no. <laughs> Back simmer down now. Yeah, that'd be weird. 
Uh, on yeah. the front, though, I want to know what do you have in the works? What What do you got new coming on? Yeah, so we uh, we we have some like tentative June dates coming up as well for lives and the remixes. So um, some folks either would hit us up, and I went and hit up Groove Foundation Recordings, and uh, so we have how many was it? Okay, there's Shady Beach. I have to count. There's like something like five remixes. Oh, <clears throat> coming out from our album um, that different producers from all over the world. Uh, we have one coming out from Toronto, and you can kind of hear the techno sound to it. That's the funniest part of all, because each each person in each different city, they would really match their city. Um, okay. St. Louis, the St. Louis remix. Uh, did have it, a St. Louis it totally vibe. Had a, a, yeah, it definitely did. Um, and the Chicago uh, remix sounds like Chicago, it, you know, the epiphany of Chicago House. There's one coming out from London that she did kind of an Afro house tribal uh, house sound and it yeah, and it's got that london vibe like and it does too. have a london vibe mm -hmm. so that's well, what that's got, like really a mix, cool mixy vibe there too well how did how did you get uh, involved with doing that what, what, what was the, the thought process of doing three matches I, I mean i don't they kristen kristen don't happened to contact the chicago one but all the rest of them kind of just contacted us and through instagram and yeah. what was facebook did, yeah just social media and was like, hey, you know, do you want to send me your stems and I'll remix it? And, you know, what they was interesting the was... They kept playlisting the album, Sick Tone Records, and um, I think uh, just that they had... Uh, I don't... I don't how do they... I, she's She is under the label, maybe with a couple tracks. She's got a couple labels, but... Yeah, there was... They kind of all happened differently. The first person that remixed was somebody in Chicago, and it was right in the midst of, like, the pandemic and total lockdown and he was a drummer and their band ended up like getting COVID because they like uh they played a wedding and then th when they did the speeches they got it through the microphones that and that oh, was that weird yeah and he, and he was really i mean like he was pretty early on in the pandemic when he did this remix for hollow and I mean, it's I, I thought it was going to be like a Joy Thieves style because they're I mean, it's like band members from Stabbing Westward and like Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails. Oh, wow. Like it was a super group. Oh, yeah, it's this. That's what it's like a group. Now, not not necessarily that they did it. It's Dan Milligan, who's the band leader. He's the one that specifically did this remix work. But that's the name of the band um, that it's pretty much, I guess, advertised as that's how he wanted it. Um, and it's got like 30 it's members his, in the it's band. It's his main thing, um, or kind, one of his kind of like jams. pig face. Got a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he contacted us, and so I, you know when he got done with it and it was all mastered, and he sent it to us. And I, think I thought he was he was in that like kind of dark mode at the beginning of pandemic. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was perfect for Hollow because Hollow was a song that was created through Halloween, and there was even some influence when we made it of uh, Slipknot, you know, and. Oh, so it really makes metal rock and uh, it's kind of like what it's got like a, definitely a rock style guitar like industrial added, house industrial yeah, yeah. And i totally i thought it was going to be without the lounge vibe but it's got like a you know it's almost more housey than we made it yeah <laughs> and it came out really I think good it would sell more on beatport than our originals you know? <laughs> so he was kind of just like okay well you know it's yours here it's yours and we're like Okay, so wow. you know we'd never. He just wanted to do it. I guess he was craving it. Came from craving some sort of mix, remix work when you're stuck in your first lockdown ever, and then yeah. you have oh, yeah. this thing that you nobody need, knows you through a microphone. Going and, and sometimes you get that block, and you can't. You need something else to work on. You just need yeah. some other, mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. sound. He kept head. pushing for the stems. I'm like, oh, and I hadn't even like really finished bouncing them. I still literally have yet to bounce all of the stems. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible about backup person. Um, but yeah, he just was like, Hey, can I get those stems? And, and it was good. It forced us to get all the stems ready. And then, you know, it was, it was really interesting because each person that kind of contacted us, every person uses a different distributor. And oh. so we're kind of now seeing like how each distributor works and if they're taking a percentage percentage and how much that percentage is and you know, how it was, how they credit each other. Cause our distributors... Or if it's automatic and you don't have to do anything, and if it syncs all together, uh, all that detail. Very cool. Yeah, right. so, so that was kind of cool to hear, you know, just or kind of experience how how are they doing it? And every every single one of them have something different. Yeah, every single one of them, mm -hmm. and so that was kind of a learning curve. And you know, I'm, it, you know, I was 
we were kind of talking about it recently was like, you know, the amount of things that have come to us, you know, from this album, from somebody making a, you know, a custom smoking pipe with saying dance loud on it or, you know, some stencils like being mailed to us. And it was just really cool, you know, and, and I told Kristen, I was like, you know, we have to release, you know, at minimum a single year. We want to be album people. We don't want to be like EP people personally. Like I think right. sticking to albums and singles are just a little bit more our style and having small projects and big projects versus medium projects. And, and so that's where we have a, a song that didn't make it on the album. There was just no space for it. Cause, that, cause of vinyl, you know, max on the amount of time you want on right, those grooves yeah. is limited. Right. Yeah. And cause you kind of want to keep it under quality. 40 minutes, keep quality, you know, Ideally, you know, 18 minutes aside. Um, so when you get towards those inner grooves, the bass doesn't just start to go away. I love that you guys work on vinyl. Oh, it's... oh yeah. I mean, that'd be kind of, I mean, I'm a DJ that has all this vinyl. I can't not be inside one of those shelves. My <laughs> Yeah, my parents had a big vinyl collection growing up that I acquired and and that was it was just a big goal of both of ours for just different reasons and i i i can't i don't have a memory so i i like album art i like to look at it and that's how i remember all the album names now mm-hmm. so now that there's no there's barely any album art or it's just getting going again since spotify's new capabilities but right. i can't remember anyone's music i'm like what am i spinning i have no clue i <laughs> You know, it's yeah, you, you, you rely a lot on that album art when you're when you're out, you know, you're doing stuff. And it, but that's what made you want to buy that album to start with. It wasn't. Yeah, it's the yeah, it's how much effort you put into the visual. Yeah, always the visual. Yeah, and it was kind of like I, you know, we kind of have a rule of thumb as the amount of work you put into something will come back to you times three. And and this is our baby. And you know, when we got it mastered, and you know finding out that there's this special technique called like half speed lacquer cutting. And that was just really cool. Yeah. Or... That was all an accident. How we found out that even exists. <laughs> yeah. We, I'm a we big just interviewed so many mastering engineers and was just asking them questions like, what you going to do? What's, what's you going to slide it in? How are you going to do things? What's, what do you think? What's, and then if I found the right answers that I agreed with in their techniques, then that's who we pick. So, you know, we even started with someone else and then went to Matt Colton in the end. And then, yeah. And Matt Colton does a lot of work for Tom punch. York. And I was just a big fan of Tom York. And, you know, I love that kid a album. And, and I was like, you know, it, it's, it, our music kind of tonal as well. And, you know, he's got that British EQ. He's got all the analog stuff and not that you need analog. It's just that if you're, you have to reserve it if you used it, you know, in the most way. And, and, and still, I love, I love everything digital. Don't get me wrong, but you know, you, you, you get, you, you lose something. If you, you have a little bit more, I don't know. I do. I have a little bit more respect when I see some analog stuff. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. when I discover music, I call it. Um, I, I the way we did it was um old school recording analog techniques mixed with new school electronic production because the plugins and all that stuff that's super oh, yeah. digital you know i mean man pro q um fab filter man that's like that yeah. that i don't know we're not we endorsed do. by fab filter but we 100 percent support that plugin yeah. all around but if you would like to be endorsed by fab filter yes no. actually <laughs> don't need nobody yeah you know actually there is something that came up recently we did last week that's coming out i think this week is we were contacted by Reverb.com to go and do like a microphone polar patterns video and explain all that. Sweet. And we were talking about That's wanting cool. to kind of create more experimental videos for audio experiments and stuff for our YouTube, but we never really wanted to be like YouTube teachers. I don't yeah, think we just want to play with these toys. We... Yeah. I don't think cool. we're teachers. We're just like little yeah. kids that like to play with stuff like Beavis and Butthead over yeah, here. Yep. And <laughs> so they, they had us in their studio and, and I hope the video come came out good. We had a good time while doing it, but I'm kind of hoping that with with things like this, like every little thing kind of helps with the future. Like right. nothing's immediate gratification, but More ideally, like, I hope I stood up straight and I'm not slouching. Is what she really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope I wasn't awkward and smiling hope, at the camera too I much. I hope there was not too many cuts that he had to do. Cause... <laughs> yeah. So it was like it's nice because I'm kind of hopeful that in the future it's going to be able to give us endorsement. You know, especially yeah, with microphones. Yeah. Like microphones. I would love expensive. Like Tascam or AKG. You know, there's certain 
very sure. specific brands that we use and really enjoy. I'll uh, create a whole PDF report of testing I've done and report it to the subscribers we have, and maybe that'll work. Do it. So I kind of, I kind of wondered if, if I don't know if you've ever done, um, you know, ever filled out an endorsement pages like I no. have, and I haven't heard anything back. It was in the midst of the pandemic. I'm hoping that was the case, but mm -hmm. I, there's always the question you know, are you a teacher? Um, cause they want to know your influence. Like why would we want to give you a discount on my drum kit sticks when I'm making money off you, you're going to buy them anyway. You know, what kind of influence would you have for someone else to want to buy it because you have it. Right. And, and that's where I'm kind of hoping, well, maybe technically these reverb.com videos would be kind of teaching in a way. Not yet. Not we yet. Have have. But I think if we start rolling them out, I'd like to do another one yeah. where we talk about like would, stereo pair techniques. It would just be a playlist on our channel of, hey, here's our teaching crap. Yeah. Hey, here, here's us alley shopping. Hey, here's us playing our toys, our microphones. Oh, here's us building our bus. That's what we're going to do uh, oh, this yeah. month. It's going to be like. HDTV, uh, <laughs> Beavis and Butthead. Right? Yep, there you go. <laughs> no, I, I, anything would help you guys, I'm sure. Absolutely. I don't think it would hurt. No, not at all. Who and knows? I, at this month, we're wanting to like build out our bus and put flexible solar panels on the roof and get oh, a little oh, air conditioner. Wow. And so we've we've learned real quick that you know March in Florida is not March anywhere else, and it is really really hot. Yeah, it's hot. And, really hot and and i just i didn't i don't know i guess i just i asked a friend that lives down there I, you know i was like well can i get like a suntan and she's like yeah kind of i guess maybe so we go to the beach i'm like lobster <laughs> you know ginger over here kind like of, of course uh, you're you're like me because our people pinkin yeah we don't yeah. no we don't i don't, I don't burn i pinkin that's what yeah. i tell everybody i live on an island and i'm i'm constantly pink <laughs> oh like, yeah yeah so we're wanting to put like, um, you know, like kind of build out our kitchen and get our battery banks all set up and get our electrical set up to the T, you know, because our old bus, we just, it was set up well, you know, because we're part timers, we're not full timers in the bus, but you know, it's, yeah, I'm really excited to get it going now. And Are you going to try to do some sort of like mini, mini studio type thing on the bus as well? Are you gonna we, um, that's what we were going to do before this bus. In the previous bus, we were going to, we brought all our equipment and we're setting that up as a studio. But now I really want these tiny Genelec speakers. Uh, <laughs> oh, what you talking and, about? Because, you know, once I saw those speakers, then I started to think, hey, this that'd could be happen. perfect for the bus. Because <laughs> they were the cutest, smallest professional studio speakers i've ever seen yeah, yeah. they're they're amazing and, and there's another speaker out there and i can't remember the damn name of them have you seen them they're they're damn they look like sheets of paper wow have you seen these speakers wow. they're so blasted thin i watched this um oh there's a there's a, a video i think it's on youtube and uh this guy did a studio and he's showing it and it looks like like uh sound panels on a wall you know like you know uh -huh. but they're speakers but they're thinner, and the whole room is. Uh, it was. It was absolutely freaking amazing. This technology. Mm, I wonder if it's um similar to electrostatic. Yeah, because those are like thin electrostatic oh, they're so thin. Of metal that are but the they entire sound So awesome, guys. They do, and they're actually. If it's the same speakers, they admit in 360. It's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, it was like so back crazy. in the day. They were like kind of between the cone and electrostatic speakers, and the and the. It's weird because back in the beat they were like they couldn't make them any less than the size of a door they were huge they couldn't figure out how to make them smaller and they were at the time taking pig skin and putting it between what two magnets two mag the poles of a magnet and then it the skin would vibrate and then that was like kind of the electrostatic vibrations it would emit through the that, speaker that, yeah it would just you know function cool. it's like a sign you know according to the wave and so we actually, we learned about this because we found these massive speakers in the alley, literally down the street behind our house. And it was, Chicago's got really great alley finds. There's kind of this <laughs> non-verbal thing that you put good stuff out. Like you don't throw it, you know, it's, and, and it's usually things you could bleach or down or whatever. And so we see these huge speakers and we're like, whoa, what is this? And we pull them in and one piece just need to be soldered to the jack. That was the issue. One of them went out and it was just one cord came off. And 
and it had they had like all these amps and everything out there and so we grab everything we we put it together it was and someone's uncle's a kid came out i was like yeah that was oh like later we end up talking to the kid yeah. and i guess like the uncle had like passed or something and they just threw it out in the alley and but the f- fidelity of these speakers are like crazy and You'd like to stand next to it on really loud and he probably paid a lot of money for those most likely he did in the 90s how much were they like Like four g's four g's or something for these two speakers and you know they just the speakers amps you know that's not including like Mm -hmm. the giant cables that you would need and sure yeah and it was and it was crazy because you know we we were blasting them and we're like we want to hear it and we stood right in front of it and were able to talk and hear each other so well. And it was like, this is weird. You know, this is, this, they are big sounds, but they're not blowing your hair, you know, or right. wiping you out and giving you, you know, it was, it was just different. And we quickly noticed the high fidelity, high fidelity of these speakers. And it was just like, they're amazing. And they even like ribbon microphones are kind of similar in the way that they work. Mm-hmm. Um, and and now they're like they're starting to make them smaller. So when they couldn't make them any less than the size of a door, that's when cone speakers kicked in. And they were like, you know, we can make them at any size, and they're easier and they're cheaper and they're smaller. And sure. and that's where cone speakers just took over. But you know, electrostatic speakers, if if a, there was a festival with them, I mean, that would be the best sounding festival. Hmm. But it's oh, it would. Just not economically feasible. Right, so, right. I mean, you, know. you were talking about like things making them, you know, with the flatness and all that good stuff about with the with the speaker. Have you guys seen? This is completely different, but have you guys seen the freaking weird commercial with the people folding their phone? No. Okay. It's. Oh yeah, that's a real phone. Yeah, yeah, it is. I know, and that's what I'm saying. It's like it's it, Samsung, it, I think. Yeah, it's a new Samsung. It looks like uh, like you know, just your typical. I'm smart- imagining like a handkerchief. No, no, this is like it looks like a a smartphone, right? But they're folding it in half with the screen. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. Like the screen is folded it, and everything. It's cool, but so it's we're really going awful. back to flip phones. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's awful because I I went and looked at one. I was going to buy one, and the guy said, "Don't do it." He says you get just the wrong piece of lint in here that may have some form to it, something a little stiffer than usual, a piece of sand. It'll mess up your screen. Yeah, wow. it, it dents the screen. He says you can wow. you can scratch the screen with with your fingernail easily. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's neat. It even out? It's, it's neat dumb. though. It's neat. I was just saying I would never own one because I'm kind of like I would you know I have trouble dropping the screen and cracking it now. I can imagine folding the motherfucker. You know. First version is always the poopiest. Yep. Yeah. 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 Man, Samsung's really stepping up. I noticed that they acquired AKG and JBL and I think Martin. They're yeah. all best friends now. Yeah. yeah. And then I, oh, and um, what is that reverb that everyone uses? Um, um, it starts with the L. Lexicon. Lex- hmm. They own Lexicon now. It was like, wow, you own a lot of things. And then I even noticed that on Fortnite, they have like a, you know, they're partnered with them and skins. And oh, yeah. it was just like, Wow, Samsung's really Sam- kicking it. Samsung is now the Disney of technology. Yeah, I, it I really hear, is. That's the new TV I just bought was a big ass Samsung. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. yeah. I, I'm really happy with the sound. It's such a thin TV. They're it's, leading in the LEDs too. Yeah, they're it's it's amazing. I was like, wow, this picture quality is. But the sound yeah. is. I, w- I was expecting the sound to be so distorted because the how thin the TV was, with without oh. a sound bar. But it's it's freaking, it's awesome. Nice. What size did you get? Uh, I got a uh, 80. Whoa. Dude, we just saw a 77 inch TV box in the alley and it was the size of us. Do people know yeah. what TV? <laughs> and yeah. I had to get help bringing it up the stairs. It's like a roommate. That's like a Yeah. Do you have to feed it? Jeez. It's, yeah. it's crazy big. That is crazy big because we have a projector and, and, and that's where, be, you know, like a projector screen. I, I didn't tell anybody which one I was getting. I just said, well, well, the other one crapped out. My other TV just went blank. You know, it just, there was no screen left to it. It's like, oh, it sucks. Oh, no. So I ordered. I was like, well, if I want to order one, I'm going to order one. Yeah. Then I was like, but I didn't buy a new stand for it. So I, w- I don't, I don't want to mount it on the wall. So I was like, oh, crap. My stand's not big enough. The TV's going to be too big. I didn't, I didn't do my math. So I was like, crap. So I went and I found these another set of like aftermarket legs that you can attach to it. 
Wow. Oh. So now I got this Do little. Legs? Skin. Yeah, there is, it's like tiny, tiny. It looks like it looks like little elf feet, but oh. it's in the middle, middle of the TV instead of the chicken feet on the corners like they have. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and that's but now I have this this big TV on this tiny ridiculous stand. This looks silly, but I gotta yeah, yeah. I gotta rectify. Hey, it works, do you right? do you game on that TV? Yeah, yeah. I, wow, oh, that's 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 what what it's the man. Yep, that's, yeah. Wow, that's my that's, next I, one. I, I haven't played with Wayne on 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 the TV yet, but I have uh, turned the Xbox on it and went. This is just amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, you could see everything everywhere. Yeah. It's like your characters like like you. Yeah, that is so cool. <laughs> what games are y'all playing these days? Still no, Halo? No, no, I haven't played Halo in a long time. What are you, what are you playing, Wayne? I haven't played with Wayne on the game in like forever. Uh, really, the only thing I've been playing is uh, Gears of War five or four or whatever it is now. And then, um, uh, like I'll play around with uh, some other like puzzle games and whatnot, whatever's free. <laughs> Just check it out. I haven't really, yeah, I do. haven't really I like sat down and gamed, you know. Yeah, nice. I like. I like my Red Dead and uh, I like uh, my Call of Duties. You know, I like shooting people when I'm angry. Nice, that's awesome. Uh, I whatever happened to Duck Duck Hunt? Duck Hunt is that Call of good. Duty. I know it evolved. Yeah, it <laughs> you're pretty much right. I remember good old Duck Hunt. That was so cool when you when I was a little kid and I found that old that old arcade game at the the department store. And you were so I, stupid. I, the gun. Were... I like the gun thing. Hey, well, you see, yeah. what... How does that work? Cool. Like, how does it... Is there attachments now? No, right. I mean, like, but Duck Hunt, like, work? back in the day, like, how did all, that it work? Light. It's just light. Light? Yeah, yeah it was just, oh. like, shooting a flashlight. You could actually mess somebody up uh, yeah. if they were playing Duck Hunt if you had the, the correct uh, concentrated beam flashlight. Yep. Interesting. I always wondered. Thank yeah. you. All yeah. right. Appreciate that. <laughs> I miss that game. Yeah, I remember when uh when the was it was it Super Nintendo when it came out and it had you know, like you had like the uh the rocket launcher thing that it came with. Did you see that yeah. one? Super Nintendo. Oh Oh, I never had a Super Nintendo. I didn't either. I was I went I was from Nintendo old. to Sega. For shame. Probably a PlayStation probably probably a PlayStation person too. Uh oh uh, yeah. Well, see, told yeah. you. I like Sega though. I had my, I had all Sega games. Okay, well, to be fair, okay, so I got a free PlayStation One given to me, and then I would kill it on Tony Hawk. Then right. the movie The Warriors is like one of my favorite movies, and this friend of Kristen's was like, "Yeah, dude, there's a video game." I was like, "Really?" Yep. And it was on PlayStation Two, so I got a PlayStation Two literally for this one game that we <laughs> still play, and it's still awesome. And I would love for them to make a newer version of it. You uh, go and you probably will get never the tag up, you know, spray paint like you know the W for the Warriors, and it's just a really cool game. And and then you know when that I think we we talked about last time when that wreck happened or whatever, and we're in the hospital yeah. and we didn't have, we were like, well, what are we gonna do in here? We're here for a month. Then we got a place stare at daytime TV. Yeah, so we got a PlayStation Four. And then we started playing like Walking Dead, like a bunch of Telltale's games because it was kind of like pick your own. Yeah, Telltale games are fun. Those are fun. Uh, And that was really cool. And and then we'd kind of play periodically. And then like last week, I had some a bunch. I realized a bunch of my hometown friends, like childhood friends, were like all on Fortnite. And we're I was like, oh really? And I had Fortnite just because I wanted to check out what it was about. A bunch of, you know, it was like, man, it has so much press. Parents are trying to ban it. Kids are addicted. Like, what is going on with this? And I, so I played kind of, for, you know, periodically. And then I found that, like, you could play with other people. So then, like, last week for, like, a week, I was, like, addicted to playing with friends. It was just <laughs> like, this is so cool. I got, yeah. like, the headset. And it was. I mean, the best thing oh, about so- gaming is the social aspect of it. I mean, it really is. I mean, mm-hmm. like, I. When I play by myself, I just sit here and just I don't even talk to anybody. I just kind of randomly play through, you know, a couple matches and then I I turn it off. Um, But if like if Justin's on or Rum's on and we play in or whatever, like we we could play for hours, like because we're just bullshitting back and forth and we're just shooting people and just having fun with it. You guys ever go to? um, I've been to a a place called Ignite on. um, It's like a gaming lounge. Do you have those near you? No, we don't. I don't have those. We had we had one uh, a gaming lounge in when I lived in Savannah, Georgia. It was called the uh, Chromatic Dragon. Nice. Oh, was, oh, those are fun. I love gaming lounges. Yeah, gaming lounges should be more 
they should they should have more of them. They're they are pretty damn fun. I think they're slowly growing. They are really cool. Even there's this one that opened up out in the suburbs, which is the Ignite's the same company, and they have like a liquor license. And I was like, okay, well this is even cooler, because you can kind of it's like five dollars an hour. And then they have like specific rooms, like if you're in a guitar hero and all that. And then they have like the whole center area is like all the computers. And then around the edges of the building is, you know, where it's just TVs and couches and, you know, and it's just, you can pick your console and, you know, do whatever. And it was, you can, I mean, it's like having all of the consoles like, Hey, let's go switch to, you know, this box, that box. And... Sure. No, that's cool. I think, I think and it's what, you can kind of experiment with the game before buying it there. Like, you know, is and it worth the investment? And they usually have non-alcoholic fun stuff too, more likely. Could, could you do the, this at, at, dragon they had uh you could be like you're sitting at booth say 23 could you play against booth 56 oh uh, i think there's a different area where that could be for the pc games where it's like a whole giant circle okay so i think maybe as only, a computer you log into a server yeah i only played the computer games once but it's cool because there's even like servers will like bring you food and stuff. Because the couches like... have the different consoles, and then the cir- giant circles are the computer PC games. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, was so really like cool. Couch, there's like a bunch of couches with their own big ass screen TV, and then it's just like instead of restaurant tables, they have a couch and TV per per group, or you know, or whatever. One to four people can one. They they even give you stools if you all can't fit on the couch. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I think of uh, Ignite, I think of like Mortal Kombat because they just have these massive, oh. really cool. And they have those rooms. They have like small theaters with a straight up like real theater room that you play and a stage that you play guitar band and you rent the thing privately and, you know, people bring pizza and have like guitar band. Yeah, no, that, no, that's cool. That's fine. That sounds like a cool idea, you know? Yeah. To be like that. So- while we're uh, nerding out on games, did you all see the new Mortal Kombat yet? Ah, uh, yes, I did. How'd you feel? I liked it. I thought it was good. I, I thought it was a fun. Too. I thought it was a yeah. fun movie. I didn't think it was bad. Uh, it's all these a lot of a lot of crap. Yeah, but... I was gonna say all the people I'm who are like... giving it shit. I'm just kind of like, come on, guys, it's a fucking Mortal Kombat movie. What did you want? It's not gonna win yeah, a lot. It's gonna win Oscar. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna win an Oscar, guys. Come on. What the fuck? You know. That, that yeah. Was though. I was seeing people were kind of upset that they like strayed away from, you know, a lot of the games and the story modes and stuff. But at the same time, you know, when you see any kind of movie that has that's, you know, Walking Dead or Marvel movies or whatever, they always kind of stray away. So you don't know exactly what's going to happen next. I was say They have to. You have to change the story or you're going to know exactly what's going on. That's stupid. Right. You know. And I'm I'm pretty excited about it. You know, Nether Realms like in is in Chicago, and and I I even looked back when they made the arcade game and how they did it because it, because it looked so lifelike. It was kind of a series of photos. They like got real people in, and it was really interesting hearing how they designed the characters, and then hearing how it was banned in Australia when it originally first came out because it was just too gory. And and I love the 1994 film. Like I love it. I have it on VHS and. Even the animated one, actually, at the very end of it, kind of shows how they made the film. Um, I even like the Annihilation. Um, so this one, it was like it was it was gory and it was good. And uh, there was there was also like was it Mishima? They put out like Mortal Kombat Legends. It was like yeah. a web series, and I loved that one too. The way they depicted Baraka and well, what uh, was cool about that series too was the soundtracks. Yeah, yeah. the soundtracks yeah. to me made that game. Mm-hmm. If you didn't have the right music to that game, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been as good. It wouldn't it, it, because I remember jamming out in my car to the Mortal Kombat soundtrack. Same, it, yeah. Same. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, I put like two mattresses on the floor, and uh-huh. my brother and I I used like a closet pole, um, and like we would fight, you yeah. know, <laughs> with, yeah. with, that, right. with that soundtrack. You, you find you you, know? you think that's funny, man? We used to it was like me and like I used to skateboard with a lot of guys, and we all we'd, we'd all go to my friend's house who had a trampoline, and we would do this thing we called Mortal Kombat, where we get on the fucking trampoline and beat the shit out of each yeah. other. <laughs> it's like Fight Club Mortal Kombat. It was <laughs> it, Club trampoline. it was horrible because we had a lot of stitches, and it was bad because like because we. 
I mean, literally, they would kick each other off the off the yeah. trampoline Ooh. onto like it's fences. Not a real childhood, unless somebody gets stitches. Yeah, I mean, they, they were landing on fence poles, and ah, oh, it was bad. Ooh. Yeah, we had some bad injuries, but it was fun. I mean, we still Our talk about racked this right between the screens. Yeah, pretty much. Ugh. Or like the what are those the. What? what are those like circular things? Springs. Spring. Yeah. Like spring. when you fall between those two springs. Yeah. Oh, I, I oh got yeah. Pinched by one of those springs. You that know, shit hurts. Just, oh, the bed spring. Grab the skin. Oh, oh those springs. Yep, and just pull oh, it right it's... off. Yep. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like that. I remember there was. I remember jumping on a trampoline when I was a kid, and a girl got stuck, and that's what happened. The spring got caught on her leg, and she couldn't get out. Yep. It was like horrible. Yeah. Oh, that is sounds horrible. Yeah, sorry. We're gonna, you know, it's the, just as safe as wheelies. <laughs> wheelies. 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 Yeah. Yeah. In the backyard. You know, we were just talking the Wait other day. Wheelies come back. We saw in this like this show. It was like talking about like how ropes were made. And we we're we we're like you know now that we're like of the age of that we could have children and and kind of in our prefrontal vortex is fully developed, and we we're like looking I was like do you remember like climbing a rope in the gymnasium when you're in like grade school, and all they would put down on the floor were those like ringworm mats, that, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it was like there was no crash pad there was no nothing, you know, and it was kind of scary and it was like man that was super unsafe you well, know? There's, there's a lot of things now there's a lot of things as when we were children as if you look at now you're going what the fuck was i thinking like it's just ridiculous but you know whatever we grew up we're not dead so yeah we're doing good i think we need to take some safety stuff away from kids. we do i think we need to teach the children that shit will hurt if you do it wrong yeah I mean, because you know, if if you if you pad their lives, you know, they don't they won't learn anything. That's true. I, yeah. I've mostly learned the hard way on everything, so that's, I can hurt. that's the best way to learn. Well, know? that that's yeah, why we ended up with the millennials, you touch man. It, you get burned. That's what happens. <laughs> you heard me? We almost said that's why. That's how we ended up with the millennials. Everybody was padding those kids, and look what happened. I know. I know. A Tonka trucks made of plastic or right? metal. What, right? that about? what is that? That's some bullshit right there. Like a Tonka truck supposed yeah. to be made out of metal. It's supposed Hyper to allergenic stuff inside bean bag chairs. Yeah. Come on. Can't have a can't have an action figure that shoots something. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the little particles that come because the kids choke on it. What the fuck? Stupid kid eating stuff. Yeah. Right. God. Come I on. I remember putting a rock in my ear as a kid and having right? getting it like full on removed from a doctor. Like, Same. I didn't have a rock. I had I had uh, bubble gum and a marble. Mm. You were gonna make the marble didn't come out. Yeah, it's still in there. That's why I have a brain. <laughs> That's my brain is the marble. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, what is it that makes it's like, hey, here's a hole. Let's put stuff in it. You I don't know. know I take I take I, boogers out of this hole. Because as adults, we still do that. that Let's combine the two and see what happens. Yeah. Well, the I mean, that, that don't push stuff out. Let's put stuff in. I mean, come on, guys, think about it. As as adults, we still do that stupid shit. Like, well, look, there, there's a hole over there. I'm gonna take a stick. Let's see what if something comes out. You know, right? It's like, hey, this tastes really bad. Taste it. Right? Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, this is horrible. Oh my gosh, it smells horrible. You have to smell it. Um, my cousin used to do that to me all the time. He was older than me, and he'd, he'd go, he'd, he'd look at it and go, he'd make a face. He's eating something. It's like, oh, this this tastes like. This tastes like crap. Try it. <laughs> right. no, I don't want to try it. no, I'm gonna make you try it. No, no, you have to. You have to. We have to have the same experience. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. Humans are fucking I love ridiculous. It. Too terrible to be true. Dude, humans are so weird. Like, why do we have the desire to put a blanket over someone when we fart in it? I don't know. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's. It just. <laughs> It's it seems like logical. Well, like, the thing yeah. is, this is why do why do we all think that bodily fluids and gases and whatnot are funny? Yeah, like it's it's everybody does it, but damn, it's funny. It really I, is. I've never done that. Why, I would always bastard? like if someone would like pass of the gas, and I would always be the first one laughing, and then I would always get blamed because I did, <laughs> you know. Cause you giggle, cause I giggle. You got the the fart giggle. Yeah, it's too funny. You know, I mean, I guess if I were a creator of humans, I would make you know the the gases that come out of their body funny sounding. Yeah. What if it was like orchestral sounding? Yeah, I'm like stringed like instruments. Oh, okay. Fart the you know, tune. Fart the tune. 
Yeah, I mean, that would be boring. Be sophisticated. It would be, yeah, sophisticated. I am sophisticating digestive sounds. And that's what we call my fist pumps, because sophisticated pumps, because my finger doesn't bend, so it looks like I have, like, one pinky out. You're very proper. When I fist pump, I have proper fist pump capabilities. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, fist the pump. Well, guys, you want to tell everybody out there where they can find your music again and tell everybody how to uh, find you? Yeah, we are on Instagram at Dance Loud Music and Facebook, and we're getting going with uh, our van build this coming month on our YouTube at Dance Loud Music. And... Yep. Or if you forget all of that, you just write in the Google Dance Loud. <laughs> yeah, there's some remixes coming out we're super stoked about. Yeah, I can't I'm wait to hear, to hear them. Yeah, I'm excited to hear them too. Oh, uh, thanks. Well, guys, look, it's been great to have you guys back on. We're looking Thank to have, so I, I can't wait to have you guys again on again. It'll be the third time. It'll be even better. It's always a fun conversation. Yeah, and when that festival comes up, y'all are we're coming up. Okay, hell yeah, dude, definitely. So we we definitely mark you guys down because I mean we've have we have some pretty uh, um, awesome talent, <laughs> including you guys selves, that are, are very very willing to do this, and and we're excited about it. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be pretty and good. What better, way, what better place to do it than than right there in New Orleans? That's right. So uh, oh heck yeah, we gotta we gotta dot the eyes and uh, try to get permits and all that bullshit. But you know it'll it'll work out. We'll figure it out. But, totally. Uh, we'll make sure to add a Mortal Kombat song to our set. Yes. <laughs> we do have those wave pops. Yeah. <laughs> it's on. We're excited. We're coming down. It's going to be good. It's awesome be good. talking to y'all. Yeah, you awesome, too, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, again, guys, thank y'all. I, I was your host, Wayne. I'm Rum. And those guys were Dance Loud. And remember, as always, to keep it, keep it, keep it. Metal, 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 metal. metal, metal. Tapping the blame and I'm gonna bring your pain. It makes your cheese a creep leave me stay. You ain't as dope as us, bitch. Stay in your lane. Hey. That's it. Get the fuck 